Hello YouTube world, here I am, back again, trying to cut some kitchen roll with some very dirty scissors, covered in paint, <laughs> um, which I don't think is going to work. Ah. Anyway, I'm back to do uh, a second in series of um, some little seascapes. Really, I can't really say that I've finished experimenting <laughs> because this is going to be just the last one. <laughs> Promise. We have a saying in our house that if you're not lying, you have to say promise. And very often our kids used to say omise, miss the P out, because they weren't really promising. <laughs> anyway, family stuff. Um, what's my gloves? Okay, so I have two canvases here, 12 by 12s, backs. Nicely done, taped. It's raining again, again. So if the rain's really loud on when I come to edit the video, I might just have to do a voiceover again. We'll see, we will see. So, okay, my colors today. Um, I still got my teals left over from my last, I don't know how many pulls. I've still got my uh, pearly, tealy blue <laughs> PBO. I don't, I don't know what color that is, sorry. Um, I've still got my 360 and my Am 360 PBO and Amsterdam gray blue. And I'm adding gold to this, this is um, PBO 352, and then this here, this one here, if you can see it, where am I going to put it there, is um, Amsterdam Greenish Blue. So all the colours, apart from these, are green on the green shades. These are gonna add a little bit of interest. I might not use that, I don't know. And the gold for contrast, um, and hopefully <laughs> will be representative of sand. All my colors here are mixed with my normal pouring medium, which is a 700, um, 700 mil PVA. Screw fix no nonsense PVA, 300 ml of water, paint mixed one part to two parts pouring medium. That's all that's in here, okay? And a little dribbles of water to get them all up to more or less the same consistency, which might be a little bit too dark. I'll try this one. Is quite fluid. But the mound soon goes, the ripple soon goes within a couple of seconds. Let's go over my background. This is my 50% um, Amsterdam Titanium White and my 50% um, Home Bargains. Here you go. Home bit Bargains, um, Pure Brilliant White Sulky Motion for Interior Walls and Ceilings. So it's equal parts of those two mixed with um, two parts pour a medium to the one part paint. And I've made that quite thin with water. Okay, so you can see it doesn't leave anything. Little tiny trace and it's gone. I could probably even make that a bit thinner, but we'll leave it as is. So. This is where I do a direct comparison between my cell activator. Let's put that there. So 
if you watched my last video, this is my swipe colour, which has um, Amsterdam titanium white with um, my normal pouring medium, same ratios as my colours, but I've added about a tablespoon, if not less, of varnish to this. That's what I did in my last seascape. This is only Floetrol, only the Aussie Floetrol with Amsterdam titanium white. I want to see how the two um, compare to each other. I've noticed already, I expect this to do far better by the way, but as I mentioned before, without selling a kidney, it's, it's I don't want to spend that much money. <laughs> Not unless I was a world renowned artist making lots of money. I don't want to spend lots of money on, on Floetrol. But it's very creamy. And I noticed when I was making it up, you don't I didn't get any air bubbles or anything like that. Whereas this kind of a few air bubbles in there. But none in there. So hopefully I won't get the the two mixed up. I am not finished. What? I just... This is the way my brain works, guys. You saw me use this in my last video and I put it to one size very quickly. But I just want to add a squirt. I'm just going to cipher some of this off. And I'm going to add a squirt of this. Two squirts. of the uh, propylene glycol, just for the heck of it. Very cheap. I've had this lying around in my studio for a long time, okay? Long time. So that's made that quite fluid. I'm just going to just do one swipe of it and see what happens. So that's mixed in with a varnish. I used it separately before. Um, and this is how you experiment. You just process of elimination, tweaking, changing, making mud pies. So put that there and I'll try that there. Okay, so have I got everything at hand? Now I'm gonna put the bases on again. Um, a couple of people have asked me for some advice or, you know, um, about bases. I, and I've seen a couple of people, I've gone and watched their videos and they've asked me for some advice. If, if you see me do a painting over a previous pour, it's an experiment. I don't particularly expect it to dry well. Um... I don't want to waste um, a brand new canvas on something that might work or might not work, okay? If you're just practicing, if you're just starting out, it's okay. But if you expect a painting to be to dry really well, then you need to give it the best shot possible. And with the base, it needs to go onto a very smooth surface. It needs to go on to a gesso, pre-gessoed canvas okay you can't pour it onto a wet gessoed canvas if I was doing an acrylic pour and sorry an acrylic painting and I've done some on MDF I would prime it with gesso wait for it to dry I would sand it down with a sander and I would do that at least twice before I even contemplated painting on it. And that's the only reason I would use gesso. I have never used gesso in acrylic pouring. Not unless I decided to add it to something like making a mud pie again to see what it would do. But there you go. Anyway, I'm waffling. I am waffling. So there is a method in my madness, okay? I am doing this um, seascape 
And when I kind of put the colours down, you'll see I kind of fling them on. I'm doing that on purpose because I want it to be um, painterly. I want it to be, I want there lot, to be lots of negative space. And you see me um, drain most, a lot of the colour off. And by doing that, I like to see the colours merge together and see what they do rather than just swiping. I only want to swipe with these cell activators over part of the composition. Okay, right. Let's do this. So I'm just interjecting here. I am draining most of the white off my canvas. So you don't want to be left, not in this technique that I, you know that I'm doing. You don't want to be left with loads, a massive, big, what we call a pillow. Um, it's not a bloom technique. I'm I'm making sure that my canvas is covered in a thin layer of paint so it's not really running off anymore there's no ripples nothing They look nice like that without swiping, don't they? Ah. Really? It's not easy trying to do two canvases. Oops. So I haven't run all of the paint off. There's still quite a lot of movement there. So I'm going to swipe first of all with my cell activator only with the varnish in. Now, if you're going to use this, stir it really well because it has a tendency to split. Okay, I'll put my kitchen roll in. Just let it drip off. It's like making paper mache though. Sells up beautifully. Well, I'm not going to call those cells, I'm going to call it leasing. Right, so the next one I'm going to do is on this side with a flow troll. I, bet I, I haven't done this before, guys, just haven't. Going to be interesting, isn't it? Whoa, look at that! <laughs> I 
Look at the difference. Big, more detail. So this will carry on spreading, I think, and this will probably stay like that. So I can see why everybody likes Aussie Floatron. Somebody's going to have to start importing it in big quantities. Come on. Right, so this one, next one, is my my cell activator with the propylene uh, glycol in it. I mean, I guess I could add dish soap. <laughs> People have done that before, haven't they? Let's give this a go. Nothing much happening there. It didn't last time. We'll give it a minute. Back to the flow troll. This is the Aussie Flow Troll I'm going back to. So I'm going to leave that there actually, um, let's just torch them, I'm going to leave that there, she says just one more, one more. Just break that top up here. So people. They produce different effects. So the cell activator with the varnish tends to spread. You get very delicate lacing. I like it. I do like it. This is actually this is spreading too. There's a, because I've got house paint in the base, there's a little bit of a cloud effect going on here and through here. And actually, <laughs> the one, the swipe with the propylene glycol in it is doing some nice things too, beginning to merge. So not the last painting, but the painting we um, it almost looked like a cross between watercolour and alcohol inks and that's beginning to happen there I love the simplicity of these I think next time I do one I'm going to add quite a lot of gold I'm going to do a band of gold at the bottom I'm almost tempted to do it on this one, but I won't. So you can see that colours just beginning to merge together. Maybe you might get some cool effects happening. I'll have a look tomorrow. 
it does look very watery doesn't it and then you can see where I swipe with the Aussie flow troll there I mean maybe who's <laughs> Who's to say that I can't swipe with all sorts of different things in the same painting? Well, there's a thought. But the test will be to see how much they dry compared to each other. Because if, if you get lots of different... I would never do a painting with different pouring mediums in my colours. They're just going to dry different rates. Different. It's just not going to be good, okay? But this might be slightly different because I'm only using differences in my swipe colour and I'm only using a very minimal amount. But you can see the Aussie float troll here. Isn't that lovely? Looks like a, a, a pebbly beach. I love it. Come on guys, the powers that be got to get this stuff there in bigger bulk cheaper into the UK okay so let's look at the very very nearly dried results of these two little seascapes I'm trying very hard to remember which one's which I know okay so this first one let's deal with this one there you go so this was the one with um, my cell activator, lacing activator, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So it has produced some nice effects. Let's just see that. Can you see the colour shift paint in there? So that was the varnish in the pouring mixture here. So it's spread a little bit but given some lovely effects. This was, the middle one was the my cell activator with the, with this stuff added. And I put quite a lot in and it has produced some lovely effects with the house paints, not splits or anything. Lovely watery effects, almost looks like alcohol, alcohol ink. So that through there, is a little bit unpredictable, although it produced some nice effect. This was the Aussie Flow Troll. I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of left a film. It's kind of sat on top. And I put it up there as well. And you can just see it's like a ridge. It's, it's a nice effect, but it's not... Oh, careful, it's not quite dry. Um, I think maybe what I'm going to do next time is water it down a little bit maybe it was a little bit too thick um, but I'm going to say something a little bit controversial here in that in fluid art I think people can get carried away with effects the effects of Aussie flow troll the effects of this and the effects of different pouring mediums and not really look at the composition of or colours of a painting and what they're trying to do, what they're trying to represent. Now, art is very subjective. I'm an artist. Some people like what I do, some people don't. But I'm very conscious that even though I'm being going completely abstract, um, for me, the main criteria it's not really the effects that I get, but the composition and what I'm aiming to do. And that is seascapes. So the house paint background through here and here has created some lovely effects. It has created a cloudy effect. And I wasn't necessarily going after the pearl cells. It wasn't the name of the game. This one, so the Aussie flow troll right the way through here and through there. So it's a little, little bit closer than my cell activator. I don't think I don't think I put anything through there. So that was just the paint with the house paint mixture. Can you see the difference? So this is a little bit more stable. 
Um, I don't know why I'm bothering with these because they're dry really. So this one, the Aussie Flow Troll went a bit wonky there. It's still nice. It's still for us, you know, a set. I'm, I'm quite pleased with what I've done. So where do I go from here? You may ask yourself. Well, I have done one more actually, which is just over there, um, which is similar to these. And it's quite wild. So I will show that next time. I'm going to start consolidating my ideas now. In other words, I'm going to stop. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to move on to a set of smaller canvases. It's still seascapes, but I'm really going to start to play around with colours. Um, I'm going to stick with the with my cell activator and the Aussie Flow Troll because they've dried well in the same painting. I don't, do you know, I don't want to have this effect all over the painting. I really like the, the the difference and the depth. And this is what I'm talking about, okay? The composition. I like the difference in textures and the difference in depth using the different colours and going from light to dark. Um, so I'm not getting so caught up in the effects that I get. Does that make sense? Am I going to be shot at dawn at that? Um, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed these videos. So moving forward, I really hope to really go somewhere with this. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.